Thank you. I just got a message. You couldn't hear me. I was muted. So, uh, you know, this is live TV and you just got to do what you got to do. Uh, so anyway, my um, intro this morning to Monday Morning Mojo is uh, an action plan around staying positive. And it's really appropriate, I think, right now for us to think about this. And um, it comes from an author that I've been following for a while, and his name is John Gordon. I don't know if any of you have read any of John's books. He's written um, probably at least a dozen. And uh, the one book that I'm going to refer to today is called Stay Positive. And, you know, it's interesting. I think that uh, the term positive is used all the time. And I think that a lot of people have a different relationship to the meaning. And today we're going to talk about an action plan. It's going to appear to be very simple to you. And yet it's going to be an action plan that if you choose to follow and create some habits around it, I believe will make a huge impact in your world. And I'll just say that oftentimes the simplest things are what make the biggest changes. So um, it's not always about complex. And uh, just because something is simple, though, doesn't mean it's easy. So it is going to be uh, something that you can follow for the rest of this week. And each morning for the rest of the week, I'm going to put the next step on, face on the Facebook group. So if you'd like to take some notes and um, jot some thoughts down that we're going to go over, I would uh, recommend that if you're interested in really making uh, some positive changes in your world. So again, thanks for joining me. I'm going to uh, share my screen just so that we can follow along a little bit with uh, the points that John makes in his book. And again, I'm referring to a book by John Gordon, if you're just joining me. And the name of that book is Stay Positive. And this is the cover. So if you are interested in getting into the book a little bit more, you can uh, feel free to do that. And um, what this is, is John wrote this book. It has a lot of quotes in it, and it has some very simple, as I mentioned, ways for you to really incorporate um, a different outlook. And that's really what this is about. You know, being positive is not Pollyanna-like. It is really a mindset and an attitude, and it's a really, it starts with a choice. So this this action plan that we're going to go over for the next seven days, if you choose to follow it, I, I believe will help you become stronger and more resilient and I think better equipped to face the challenges and adversities that we all see around us every day now. And I, you know, believe that we're all still dealing uh, or navigating all the things that have changed in the last year. Um, honestly, it's not even a year, right? It's been the last seven months. So this is an opportunity for you to start facing the world from the inside out. So it's going to give you an opportunity to make decisions around how you want to show up energetically, how you want to look at the circumstances around you and how to perhaps change your perspective. Because when we change the way we look at things, the things that we look at do change. And so this is about taking action uh, and, and uh, taking action around this new mindset. And so I decided to take a page from this book uh, and give you this seven day action plan because I think that it's very purposeful. And again, like I mentioned, it's simple. Uh, it just may not be easy for all of us to stay um, focused on these uh, building these new habits. So We've talked over the last few weeks that I've been doing this Monday Morning Mojo about our emotions. We've talked about the energy that we feel right now. We've talked about the challenges that we're facing. Um, we're ta we've talked about the opportunities that have come from this um, adversity with COVID-19 and other things that are happening in our world. And so um, I think that it's about staying in control of the decisions that you make about how you want to process information, how you want to perhaps even filter information, how you want to engage with other people, how you want to show up energetically, as I said. So um, positivity is like a muscle. And if we don't work it out every day, if we don't flex that muscle, it doesn't grow stronger. So that's the purpose of this action plan. So let's get right into it. So 
The first thing uh, that we're going to talk about uh, is going to, again, these are very simple things. So if you're writing it down, the first thing that we're going to talk about is uh, to take a thank you walk. John talks about this in the book, and it, it is simple, right? This could be done daily. This could be done as many times a week as you want. And what I love about this is it incorporates um, two things. It incorporates moving, which is so important right now, because many of us are not at that level of activity that we're used to. I know I'm not. I'm working from home, and um, I'm sitting a lot. So being intentional about exercise is really important. And this thank you walk incorporates gratitude. It incorporates um, really that perspective of allowing abundance back into our life because, and again, if you're writing things down, I would definitely write this down. In order for you to call in abundance, you have to really be firmly grounded in appreciating and being grateful for where you are at any given moment. Uh, even if there are things in your life that you're looking to change and improve, it is still important to be grateful for where you are because when you are, I believe the universe, God, will let more of that abundance in because it, it shows that you're ready for it. So expressing gratitude is, is something we're going to talk a little bit more about because uh, that's part of this action plan too, but it will help you vibrate at a very high level. So if you can incorporate this practice, taking a thank you walk, so it's a, it's a great way to either start your day or end your day. Um, you can do it with someone else. You can do it with your dog, but how does it work? It's just simple. You just go out and take a walk um, anywhere that you feel energized. So um, sometimes I, you know, get in the car and go somewhere else to take a walk or a hike because I love the aesthetics of that environment. I want to be in nature and see different things, but wherever you feel good, uh, you can go out and take a walk and be right in your neighborhood. And as you're walking, it's to really get purposeful and get really conscious about reviewing what you're grateful for. And then the challenge would be to make it different every day when you go out on that walk. So you're not just repeating the same mantra. You're really looking every day for things to recognize, to be grateful for. Um, you could do this in a journal as well. You could record it while you're walking. But I just thought incorporating this with exercise physiologically is going to have huge benefits for you, right? Because we know the energy we get from exercise, we know the stress relief, we know the endorphins, and, and, and I'm not you know, an expert on this, but I believe serotonin is another one that is released, right? So this can become a really powerful way to beat the negative emotions or even depression that you might be feeling or anxiety that you might be feeling right now. So um, those, those hormonal gains that you can get from incorporating practicing gratitude with exercise will be very powerful. So that's the first one. So the way this works is let's, let's try one a day. So today, uh, if you can get out and take a thank you walk, that would be uh, step one. Step two on day two of this action plan is to just focus on gratitude itself, right? And I just explained some things about gratitude. Um, and a number of studies have shown that, gra that grateful people tend to be more optimistic, they tend to be um, healthier, believe it or not, uh, because it, expressing gratitude increases your immune function. Yes, expressing gratitude increases your immune fu function. And when I say express gratitude, I mean that in, in ways that are outside of you too, right? So it's great to think about things that you're grateful for and write them down. Do you share them with other people? Because that's really expressing gratitude. And if you feel grateful to someone for something that they're doing or contributing in your life, are you good about letting them know that? Because that, that's really expressing gratitude. Um, so because it has such a positive effect on the body, um, and that's the mind-body connection, right? We know it does increase immune function. It can improve heart health. Um, and increase, obviously, your happiness level, which all of that, too, has positive effects on the body. Um, and there's been lots of research on this. There's an entire movement around positive psychology, um, which is, is a lot of what I enjoy uh, doing and researching. Um, and so 
in a nutshell, expressing gratitude and being thankful is good medicine right now. So regardless of what is going on in our world, regardless of what's going on in your life, what are you most thankful for? And how can you express it? And how can you really experience the emotion of gratitude? So on day two, uh, you can continue your gratitude walk and perhaps you take it to another level and you reach out to someone that you're grateful for, something that they've done for you or how they show up in your life and uh, express that. Another thing to focus on uh, on this day two, a day of gratitude, is to filter the negativity. So maybe it's a day you choose not to watch the news. Uh, maybe it's a day that you're selective about what you read and, and not just in filtering it out, maybe you're looking to um, expand and bring new things in. You know, who is, who is a different author you can read or a different type of blog that you can read or, or a video you can listen to or a podcast you can listen to uh, that is much more encouraging, much more open about growth in terms of your personal growth and spiritual growth. You know, what can you take in that would give you more benefit? And, um, and I think the, the last thing I'll say about gratitude is, um, it is a mindset too, right? Because it, it's really, we don't, we don't have to do anything, right? Really. And there's a few things we may have to do, but at the end of the day, you get to do things. And I think that that's a good reminder for us uh, so that we feel more in control and less trapped. We, there are certain things, it's not that you have to do them, you get to do them, right? So, so even around work, there are so many people right now who are out of work. And so that gratitude around the things you get to do uh, is powerful. And I think that can keep us pretty grounded. So again, we're talking about looking at the seven day action plan and incorporating some of these new things each day. And you can choose to build on them. So you continue doing what you learned on day one and continue doing that throughout the week as you add, <clears throat> excuse me, as you add new things in. Um, and I'll post these reminders on the Facebook group uh, over the next seven days. So I'll, I'll remind you, today's day two, and we're going to focus on gratitude. And then on day three, I'm going to uh, remind you that it's so important to laugh. And John Gordon talks about this in the book, and he talks about really being intentional about lifting that energy and really focusing on who you're talking to and who you might be spending time with. Uh, and just laughing and really feeling joy. You know, again, research has shown children laugh like 400 times a day, right? And adults tend to laugh up to about 100 times a day. So we can see how that dramatically decreases as we get older. Does it have to? And so we need to maybe think more like children and just laugh at some things and, and, and feel joy and release. I know, you know, laughing does a lot for your, your mental state and your hormones as well. Uh, and it does reduce stress on the brain when you laugh uh, and, and smile as well. It increases, it produces more of the serotonin. So again, just encouraging you to find some humor in your day. I mean, maybe even if you have to take a quick break and find something funny to watch on YouTube, uh, humor is, is underestimated uh, uh, in terms of how powerful that is for our health. So that's the reminder is to find, um, in Bridget says laughter is the best me medicine. It certainly is. Uh, and Sarah expressed some gratitude here in the chat. Thank you, Sarah. Um, so it is, it really is the best medicine. And again, I told you, these are simple things. This is nothing, you know, earth shattering, uh, yet do we think about it enough th throughout the day? So who can you uh, call and just have a really good conversation and, and a laugh with? So uh, seek out those, those opportunities. On day four, we're going to uh, focus on celebrating success. And again, this is such a powerful tool for success itself to move you forward towards your goals. Um, and there's a psychologist that John refers to in the book. His name is Jim Fannin. And um, he was a sports psychologist. And uh, the last 30 minutes of every waking day, he recorded and replayed um, 
Uh, let me read this again. I'm sorry. According to sports psychologist Jim Fannin, the last 30 minutes of every waking day is recorded and replayed that night by our subconscious minds 15 to 17 times. So the point is, how are you spending the last 30 minutes of your day? And if that replay is occurring in your mind, sometimes as much as five times or more, um, what are you thinking before you go to bed? Are you thinking positive thoughts? Are you reflecting on the things that went well during the day? Um, or are you, are you replaying some kind of anxiety or stress loop? And I don't know about you, but I can be honest and say there have been nights where I've done that and I can't fall asleep. I am, I am worked up and really wired too tight. So um, that I thought was really um, another simple yet profound reminder of really getting purposeful and, and conscious about how we're programming our minds. So as you're laying down in bed at night, what are you doing in those last 30 minutes? Um, and do you, do you go to bed a little bit early so that you can have 30 minutes to unwind? And it, how you spend those 30 minutes will replay in your subconscious while you're sleeping, right? So if you want to wake up each morning feeling more optimistic, then be really attentive to what you're thinking before you fall asleep. And if you're thinking about all the things you didn't do, that phonetic energy is going to show up, right, in your subconscious, maybe even in your crazy dreams. And you're going to wake up not feeling rested, and you're going to wake up feeling anxious and stressed out to start the day. Am I talking to anybody out there? Can anybody relate to that? So how could you spend those last 30 minutes of, of your day where you can really relax and let go of the day, uh, read something uplifting, whether it be, you know, spiritual or uh, just something around, you know, positive psychology. If you're watching the news and then going to bed, I mean, that's probably a recipe for some anxiety. So I thought this was really, really powerful too. And um, I will say this, if you're a parent, <clears throat> teach your kids this too. Um, if you're a parent, how do the kids spend their last 30 minutes before they go to bed? Um, because I guarantee it will make them feel better and you as a parent as well. So um, is it possible for you to have some time with them where they're reading, again, praying or meditating, doing something that is really um, positive, sharing love, sharing, you know, something that is much more supportive of them emotionally than what I used to do as a parent, which was chasing them around the house saying, it's time for bed. Um, so I, uh, I think that this would be a great thing to uh, incorporate into your routine with your kids. Okay, oops. So on day five, here's what John says, smell the roses. Now we're not saying go ahead and walk around your, your uh, yard or your neighbor's yard and literally smell and pick the roses. What we're talking about is, you know, taking time in nature. Um, and so again, you can incorporate this in your walk, as I mentioned, um, or it could just be taking your coffee outside. I do that as much as possible and really being present where you're looking around and noticing the birds and noticing uh, even, even the chipmunk that's scurrying across the yard, noticing the colors of the flowers around you, the sky. Um, again, so simple yet so good for the soul. And five minutes, it doesn't have to be long, uh, yet if you can you know, really incorporate getting outside more. For those of us working at home, can you take a five or 10 minute break and sit outside? Uh, maybe make your lunch and sit outside. You know, here in the Northeast, we have to enjoy the good weather as much as possible. Um, so there's just so much to say about connecting with nature. And there's so much research about that. Um, even just um, taking your shoes off and walking on the grass barefoot, you'd be amazed at what can happen to you energetically when you can ground with the earth and, and feel just a part of the planet. And um, I think taking the time to smell the roses or take the time to get outside can do a lot for us right now, again, uh, to relieve stress and anxiety. And it's a good reminder that the earth is still a beautiful place, uh, that, that nature is working the way that it's supposed to. You know, um, 
again, not to get, I'm not here to be political with anybody, but you know, there's a lot of stuff happening around us that a lot of us wish um, we could change and we can't, it's out of our control. And it may even feel like some things are off kilter and out of balance, right? And yet when you can get outside and connect with, the, with nature, connect with the planet, like I said, just standing outside barefoot and taking it in, I feel it's a good reminder that there's still order in the universe and that things are still working the way they're supposed to. So I'll leave you with that thought. It, it does feed your soul. Okay. So now on day six, as we wrap up our plan for the week, John in the book talks about taking out your telescope. Now, again, this is not a literal uh, uh, direction to buy a telescope and start charting the stars. What this is is about vision, and we've talked about this here on Monday Morning Mojo. It's about encouraging you to create a bigger vision for your life. So, you know, when you think about it, when you stand there with your telescope, if you had the opportunity to do that, you see things like you've never seen before, right? You see a much bigger picture. You see the, the universe that we're a part of. So can you do that in your own world, in your own life? So again, I think this can do wonders for you right now in terms of mental health to rise above or get out of current circumstances and start thinking about the vision you want to have for your life in, in the next six months, the next 12, 18 months, two years, three years, where do you want to create change? Where do you want to bring control back into your life? How do you create a vision for your future that only you can, right? Because you are the master of your own destiny. So the telescope just represents the opportunity to create vision and dream for your future. Um, and that's a huge boost for your um, mindset and your positivity. When you can sit down and write down, make sure you write down what you want to create in your life. Um, what do you want to accomplish? What changes do you want to make? Uh, what difference do you want to make? Do you want to connect with people and contribute in a way that you haven't done so before? Um, and so giving you the opportunity to create more of your future brings things back into your control. So I think that is another uh, amazing mindset for, for this. And then the last thing, uh, that we're going to put on our list is to lose ourselves in the moment. And again, I think this is really important right now for everything we've talked about, right? For all the things that are on our plate. Um, do we engage in just letting go sometimes? Do we engage in just being present and uh, experiencing some joy and having some fun by ourselves even, right? Do we, do we just let go of being that person who uh, everyone goes to at work for whatever solutions they're looking for and answers, right? Let go of being someone's wife, let go of being someone's mom or dad, let go of being, um, you know, all the things that you put on yourself, right? All the expectations and just feel the freedom of experiencing some joy, throw on some music, dance around your kitchen, um, just really get into losing yourself in a moment. Uh, maybe uh, trying something that uh, you haven't done in, in a while or something new like uh, riding a bike or cooking a meal and, and singing while you do it. Um, it'll give you energy. It will, uh, again, release stress. Uh, it's fun. You know, I saw some things um, on Facebook over the weekend that I was really excited to see. Someone posted they were trying oil painting for the first time. Um, and again, these are the positive things that can come out of the, um, you know, the adversity that we've been facing with COVID over these last several months. You know, what can we try that's different? Uh, can you learn to play chess? Can you write a book or, or you know, again, uh, dance in your kitchen? You know, maybe you want to learn belly dancing. I don't know. Uh, but it's just really about letting go and not being so serious all the time and loosening up and, and loosen, uh, lose yourself in the moment. Um, so like I said, I told you, these are not, you know, difficult uh, things. These are pretty simple, um, but maybe not so easy for everyone to incorporate. Um, but uh, again, John just really helps to put some things into perspective because I think the overall message is that bringing more joy, bringing more happiness and being more positive is so important for our growth and our development and success in this world. 
and we overlook it and it's so simple to do it, it is so simple to do that's bringing your mojo back uh for sure so the last thing this is kind of a bonus and he talks about this in the book too and again it's whatever works for you but it's really about making time every day to pray or meditate and you know i i tend to have a conversation with god all day long yet taking the time out to sit for a few minutes and really get into um, any kind of prayer, meditation, it, it just dials you down and it relieves, relieves the stress. Um, it, it definitely boosts your positive energy. It promotes good health again and vitality. Um, and that all leads to longevity. And um, again, uh, I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm planning to live a long, healthy life. So I have to be more mindful of taking control of some of these things. So again, you know, turning off the news, um, filtering some negative negativity, not engaging in any kind of, you know, gossip or even self-talk, right? Negative self-talk and just um, seeking out ways to be more positive energetically. So uh, this is definitely something that you can incorporate into a lot of things we just uh, discussed. Like maybe this is how you spend the last 30 minutes of your, of your day. So it is really simple. Um, and so I will post all of these back again on the Facebook page. So if you want to try to incorporate some of these into habits, you'll be able to do so. Um, and I'm just curious for those of you who are with me here on, on Zoom, uh, and I always appreciate you for being here. And I know many of you are watching this on Facebook. Um, again, you know, I always appreciate your feedback just because it anchors some thoughts for everybody. So what did this mean for you? What did you take away from this morning's conversation? Was it helpful? Michelle, good morning. Good morning. I think it was very helpful. I think it was a great reminder. Um, and I sort of chuckled. I was reading something recently about doing something different. And the example they gave was try brushing your teeth. If you brush your teeth with your right hand, try brushing your teeth with your left hand. <laughs> <laughs> be different, right? That's right. To try it. Yeah. And your brain does function a little differently when you do something like that. Yes. Well, and that's a, I mean, that's a whole other thing about, you know, creating those different passageways in your, in your brain so that the, the new habits and, and the new way of thinking, um, you know, can really create opportunity for change. Um, so that's cool. I like that. Michelle, you were going to say something? Yeah, a couple things. <clears throat> this really does resonate with me because it's something I try to practice normally, but I drive my kids crazy with it because I'm always like, oh, you know, you need to consciously change the way you think. And I think that makes them crazy because they're like, no, ma, we're just depressed, you know? Um, <laughs> but um, one thing that stuck out to me is this whole 30 minutes before bed because I've read that you should like take your thoughts, write down your to-do list, keep a pad next to your bed, et cetera, et cetera. And then how does that fall in line with this? Like if writing down your thoughts, does that kind of get rid of them? So you can be more conscious about the thoughts that you're having in those 30 minutes. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think it does. And I think that, um, it, it, again, what goes on in our subconscious mind, right? It shows up throughout our day. So you're, you're literally programming yourself, right? To have a more optimistic view or, or to um, relieve yourself of some of the, the burden you might be experiencing. Like sometimes we're, we're, so I think we're kind of like Velcro, right? So even the most um, optimistic people, which I tend to be that person, I'm very optimistic. Uh, it's even shown up in all my assessments. Yeah. Uh, and um, yet, in these last several months, even, even consciously feeling really grateful and, and optimistic, I find myself like things creep in and, it, and it, I think we're like Velcro. So the things that we're hearing, the things that we're watching throughout the day, that they, they stick to us. And if we don't do something to kind of like shed that off, it, it, it'll show up again, you know, when we least expect it. So I, I think spending those 30 minutes at the end of the day in a, in a more positive, purposeful way is part of shedding that off. It's part of like, you know, deprogramming the negative and, and reprogramming the positive. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Sarah, did you relate to that too? I saw you kind of give a cheers to that one. 
Do you mm -hmm. mind sharing? Um, I'm not a paid spokesperson for um, <laughs> that phone app that I recommended. I'm really not, but I have had really good luck with, I'm doing the, um, there, it's a 30 day self-esteem program. That's, that's just like 20 minutes of meditation every day. And it, it's, it has made an enormous difference. Um, and that, that app also has some like sleep music um, that also kind of gets, you know, takes you down. It, 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 Yay. And Headspace, right? Yeah, we're talking about Headspace. Yeah. Which, um, oh, headspace. Okay. Headspace, yeah. And, and you, the Headspace isn't free, although they were running a, a special promotion, which I thought was great, um, that if you are a displaced worker, if you're out of work right now, you can get, I think, a year for free. Yeah. yeah. Um, but you, there is a subscription rate for it. Um, it's great. There's a lot of good content on Headspace. Another one that you might want to check out for the same, for some of the same things is Calm, C A L M, mm -hmm. uh, and that's a good one as well. And that that's a like you know you can play some some music and meditations at night too to help you go to sleep. But yeah, well, it's not to say you have to have the you know like the app. You could do this you know <laughs> you can yeah. do this yourself, but. Um, but yeah, it has made a huge difference, I think, to me. Absolutely. Yeah, there's a lot of research around calming your mind before bed and, and what that. Yeah, it's made you. sleeping so much easier. Yeah, so much yeah. more. Um, it's not that I take it for granted, but I'm, I'm having many, many fewer less uh, kind of tricky nights. So. And you really do wake up feeling more equipped to take on the day. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and the clarity, if you can start your day with some clarity, you can get into creative cognitive thinking about what you need to do and solutions that you might need to bring into your life. So it is really important. Does anyone else have any ahas or takeaways that they'd like to share before we get on with our day? Okay, well, I can't thank you enough for being with me. And I really want to encourage you to incorporate uh, if you can, all of the, uh, of the topics we talked about this morning, uh, at least, you know, the ones that you think will make the greatest change in your life. And remember, you have to really work on building a habit and it takes 66 days to build a habit. And we talked about that a few weeks ago uh, in the one thing, which you'll find that resource uh, material is still on the Facebook page, along with all the recordings from the very beginning uh, when we started this at the end of May. And I will post every morning in the Facebook group uh, these steps so that you can work along with it. And uh, again, the book that this comes from, uh, I can't take credit for any of this, uh, is um, the book from John Gordon, uh, which is called Stay Positive. John's books are very easy to read. And, and so if you want to you know, download it or uh, purchase it maybe on an Amazon, on your Amazon account, uh, go right ahead and, and check it out. And uh, he, in the book, it's actually an 11 day stay positive action plan. And I just pulled out the seven that I thought were the most profound uh, to me and created that for you today. So we can do this uh, over the next week. So thanks again. And if this is making a difference in your life, please share Monday Morning Mojo with someone. We're definitely excited uh, to just support people right now. I'm excited to be able to come from contribution and uh, I'm working on um, some exciting stuff for you all in the weeks to come. And uh, I am thinking about putting out a uh, group coaching program if anyone is interested in that. So um, any feedback you have, you know, you can always uh, message me and uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts and ideas because this is for you. So have an awesome week. Uh, focus on ways to stay positive. Thanks for being here. Get your mojo up and have an awesome day. Thanks so much, Hannah. You got have it. Have a good week. Have a good, good week, week, Hannah. Take Bye. care. Bye. Bye-bye.